in 2020, you were laid off by the WWE after almost right. 31 years in the business. 35 with them, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yet, yet, the thing with that is budget costs, we, we, we kept hearing about online. Budget costs, budget yeah, costs, budget costs. Yeah, I think it was a budget cost. So. What was it then? Don't know. Don't know to this day. I mean, you know, yeah, I was I was making really good money, man. I was, you know, I'll tell you straight out. I was probably making 240 a year. I was making 240 but I'd been there for 35 years at the time. Um, I was out on surgery. I was out, mm. I was out hurt and I made the transition. I was, I moved to Houston in 07, came here in 2019, waited about a year for a house to be built, got here in October, 2019. Then I flew to Alabama. Once I went to closing on my house here in Tampa, went, got the surgery, came home, rehabbed here for almost six months. I was just, I was ready for WrestleMania, but then the COVID hit. I didn't get a call. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. But, you know, when we look at it, like Tony Chimmel and I, you know, Tony got released too. He was with the company 38 years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just uh, no reason, no no why, no no nothing. You know, they hmm. said budget costs. But we didn't, you know, come on. The company, I think, six months later, like did, they had their best quarter in like so many years or something and and uh, did great. So, I mean, uh you know, yeah, they, they, I mean, it was, wasn't just me, but yeah, oh, of course, people like Tony Chimmel, you know, I remember talking to Crono and I said, hey, Crono, what the fuck? I said, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Like, and I know he felt bad and he was just, he was just, he didn't know what to say, but then I, I said one thing to him and he goes, Mike, look, it, it, it's not just this. It, it's you, Tony Chimmel, Tom Carlucci, John D'Amico, this one. And I'm like, oh, so everybody over 30 fucking years plus with the company, it just, mm. you know, like, so that's where you're going with this. It wasn't really a fucking budget cut, you know, like, because he's mentioning three other people in three other different departments, you know, so, and I'm thinking, okay. So but, it's an uh, it more, it sounds like an age thing more, of the, and you can get someone, unfortunately, to do your job cheaper, I'm guessing. Could I mean, it, it could have well been, because, I mean, I, I had talked to Hunter, and we, you know, I remember a few years prior to that, Hunter said, you know, hey, I don't want to see you ref until you're 60 years old or 65 years. You know, I said, no, no, I don't want to do that either. I said, man, you know, he goes, you know, I was hoping to find another transition to it. You know, that's why I moved to Tampa to be closest to the PC. Mm -hmm. And if I needed to be down at the PC, I can always drive an hour and 15 minutes down, down to the PC and train or do whatever they needed me to or do whatever was needed on the road in another position. You only have about thousands of positions in the company you know whether it's on the road or in the office or whatever so uh you know tim white made tr major transitions and, and and you know he got let go too if you don't remember you know lauren i just let him go years ago for quite a while mm -hmm. and i remember if he didn't he came back to providence rhode island god bless him i love him to death miss him and um i'm so happy for him the hall of fame and everything yeah. which is well deserved man from taking care of Andre, he did multiple things in his company. You know, taking care of Andre for eight, maybe eight plus years. Uh, do, like being an agent, doing merchandise. I remember he used to do merchandise and certain things for the company years ago, driving trucks, doing whatever. And then he went to refereeing for many years. Then he became an agent again, and then he became, um, you know, then he would do promos like you know, just uh, he would do like you know, publicity things with the talent and so forth after he came back and I remember he came back and he said, you know, I said, Timmy, you're coming back to work for us or what? And, uh, he was like, well, I'm going to have a meeting with Vince today. And I said, no shit. You had a meeting with Vince. He said, yeah. So I said, great, man. I said, good luck with everything. And he came out and got his job back, you know, because he, I guess he, you know, talked to Vince and how many years and he's like, Hey, and then Vince gave him his job back. That was awesome. It's awesome to hear. Yeah, and then he was able to work for WWE for quite a while until he passed, you know. And, but that's what he loved and enjoyed, you know. He was going nuts at home, sitting home at the Friendly Tap, <laughs> I'm sure. Getting and, destroyed uh, by the APA yeah. every other week. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, so, but it's, it's, you know, it's just, um, there's no hard feelings, you know. I wish I could do something else for the company or something like that or whatever. I mean, I thought I was going to, you know, hopefully work this company until – my time ran out, you know, but right. that didn't happen. So, I mean, it didn't happen for Tony Chimmel. didn't happen for me. So, and John D'Amico got his job back. They actually called him back and got his job back, which was cool. But yeah, but, that, 
that was a shocking moment in 2020. Yeah, I don't know if you ever remember Mark Gaten. You remember Mark Gaten? Oh, yeah, keeper? of course. Remember him? Right, great friend, everything, good guy, hard worker. We traveled the roads in the 80s and 90s and 2000s and did crew stuff at the warehouse in Connecticut and so much. Me, him, and Tony Chimmel. And Mark used to come on the road with our ring crew because we were the one step, we were the one stop shop ring crew, set up the rings, play the music, do this. We were, you know, Chimmel was a ring announcer, I was a referee. We both drove the trucks. We both did this. We did everything, you know. So, uh, and Mark Eaton used to travel with our crew a lot because he was in Pennsylvania. We were in South Jersey. One day they came up, security guy Jim, he, and he's still there, works for Vince. And uh, he said, Mike, what did Mark Eaton do? And I said, no, I don't know, nothing. What does Mark ever do but freaking work hard all day long? And he was in the production. He goes, I got to escort him out. I'm like, what? And this is El Paso at a TV taping in SmackDown. And I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me for what? I'm like, fired, Esc escort fired. It's like, yeah, I think so. So, escort him, and that was the end of Mark Gaten. And when nobody knew what they ever done, you know, I mean, they paid him for a while, which was great, which they paid me for a while, but no reason, no rhyme, no, no nothing. Why? So, no one did you ever find years. out what happened? Mark didn't know. He still doesn't know this day. Still, I still doesn't know. So yeah, still don't know really. No. Wow. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. that's interesting it is because it is. Uh, again as years have gone on uh, you always hear mm -hmm. it's kind of like ghost tales where you hear stories that you're like mm -hmm. i'm not i can't confirm these stories because i don't right. know i you right. only read about them randomly so you're like i i can't really for instance the 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 layoff of you was budget costs okay right. well i'm talking to you right now and you're like i, I you know budget costs we like i don't understand and like that's the thing is at the time when you were when you were let go, it wasn't just you. It was like like fifteen people. Right. And then, right. And then about four months later, it was another fifteen people. Then after that, it was another fifteen people. It was a crazy amount of people being laid off all at once. And the idea, at least in my brain, in a lot of people's brains, is stock here. Our quarterly earnings are coming up. So mm -hmm. how do we make mm -hmm. it look like to our stockholders right. we have more money than we actually do? Well, right. lay off a referee who unfortunately is making a good living and lay off fifteen right. more people. Suddenly we have. You know, 10, 15, 20 million dollars we didn't have before. And now right. look at it. We show our stockholders, they're like, oh, very impressive, very impressive. Yeah, and I think th that's where I think this might have gone. Yeah, that roster they let go was nowhere near than 10, 15 million. That's for sure, though. <laughs> well, some of them when, were not making when, 10, 15. When Brock, no. when Brock Lesnar didn't work out his contract, yeah, that was millions down there. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Like that some people, I was millions. shocked to see, like, I remember Braun Strowman or but Bray Brock Wyatt yeah, and yeah. people like that. I was like, damn, those guys must be making close to a million a year and more, maybe, and mm -hmm. off merchandise sales as well. And, yeah, but some talent was making an incredible amount of money because. AEW, they were sucking up everybody in these big ass contracts because they were they didn't want them to go to AEW at that yes. time. Yes, you know, so they were like giving guys like three hundred and fifty, four hundred something thousand dollars, and then like holy shit, like these contracts were huge, oh, yeah. which is great for the wrestlers, which is great because you know with Tony Khan starting up AEW the way he did, now people have a place to go. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yes. Now you have a now you have a bargaining tool. You have a bargaining, you know, you're not the only game in town, which is great for the talent.